Uh, we're at 70, but it has slowed, but people will join in. All right, guys, thanks very much. Um, we are starting this webinar now. Um, thank you to everyone who is, is joining us today um, for this webinar. Uh, we have right at the bottom of the screen, well, my screen in the blue shirt with a beautiful picture behind him, the owner of the Dulini collection, Ian Garrett. Uh, in the top left-hand side of the screen, we've got the marketing manager for the Dulini collection, Corin McEwen. Underneath her, we have the sales manager for the Delini collection, Jared Povel. And underneath me, we have the general manager of my company, Africa and Focus, Rogan Bartman, who's going to be assisting us with the technical aspects of today's webinar. <coughs> so thanks very much to everyone who's tuned in so long. Um, just to give you an idea of, of what to expect, we're going to go through, you know, the owner insights. Um, Ian's going to give us some of his insights into the Delini collection. And we'll also show you the hardware of, of the lodges and what... Uh, offers are in play, but I'm not going to steal too much of that thunder. I'll, I'll leave it to the team Delini to, to get into that. Um, regarding interaction between ourselves and you, the attendees, we cannot see you and we cannot hear you. Um, we've left that uh, those settings uh, like that for good reason, because there's a lot of background noise that generally comes through. Um, so what, what you, if you can, guys, if, if you'd like to pose a question, may I ask that you you avoid posting any questions in chat and rather use the Q&A uh, section, which if you, if you scroll down, you'll see at the bottom of your screen. So pose any questions as Ian's talking in the Q&A. That will be Rogan. Rogan will be monitoring that and he'll bring all relevant questions into the panel at an appropriate time um, for Ian, Jared or Karen to then tackle for you. All right. Um, then after the webinar is concluded, we will, is a recording of this webinar that, is, that, that we'll have, and we will send it through to you guys, um, or, you know, to share with your teams. And then we'll also send off an email with all relevant, you know, details, contact details, offers that are available, as well as, um, you know, links to Dropbox folders and marketing and sales collateral that the Delini collection has. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, um, I think let's... Um, Let's share the screen and we'll start this, this webinar. There are one or two technical stops that we're going to have to make, um, but I'm going to share screens and then we'll start from there. All right. And I'm going to give Ian Garrett control um, of this presentation shortly. Well, Ian, actually, you know what? I'll give you, uh, let, me, yeah, let me give you control now, remote control to okay. Ian. Click start. You need to then click on your screen, Ian. Yeah, I have. Okay, over to you, Ian. And must I click the actual presentation here? It, can you all see it? No, I, I've just got a white screen. Okay, there's something gone well, wrong. Let, let me double and click it. Can you I see can it now? See the folder with the presentation? Yeah, I think I'm supposed to click the control now. So hang on. No, no, hold on. Let me get out of it, Ian, and start again. Sorry. Sorry, okay. guys. All right. Let me get out of this and start again. All right. <clears throat> Apologies, everyone, in advance for this. All right. Let's see if this one works. Ian, can yeah, you see that? I see that. Yeah, yeah. So let me. Yeah, and I've started your slideshow. And hold on, I just want to check. Remote control, give to Ian Garrett. You need to click now move start. and click. Yeah, I've done that. Okay, and you need to start yeah. your slideshow again. Okay, there we go. I think I think we're good, hey? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, all right, brilliant. So I'm on, Andy? Yeah, I'm you're on. on. All right. Well, a very good morning to everybody out there and just a big thank you to for taking the time to to set aside time to listen to us and uh, and our story on the Delini collection. So essentially Andy has prepared this and he's asked for um kind of a theme of an owner's insight. And I think that, I think the main insight that uh, we, we can start on is just the fact that, you know, COVID is like, we're all sailing in a hurricane and we're trying to set our ship straight 
at the moment, but our navigation charts, charters aren't working anymore. And um, so there's an enormous amount of adaptation and, um, and a new reality that we're all trying to, 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 to grasp. But I think what doesn't change is the ethos and the heart of who we are and where we've come from. And I think I'll just elaborate a little bit on that. I think um, many of the people listening here out there this morning would have heard <clears throat> some of our background, you know, being visiting us at the camps and at the various shows. So sorry if it's a repeat or a bit boring, but essentially, you know, Delini is the culmination of two families' dreams. We, um, what's very important for us is that the Delini collection has evolved from, um, you know, a passion for this land and a passion for the, uh, for the environment and for the people and the communities outside. You know, we all know that one of the most diminishing elements of society now is, the, um, is natural wilderness. And although there's a lot of debate about the term, the term and the definition of wilderness, you know, we always remind people that the Kruger Park, the Sabi Sands, these last bastions of wildlife are technically no longer wilderness because they have communities living entirely around the boundaries. But that is, you know, there are very few places that are that remote that they have absolutely nothing. But what happens inside the reserve, the tapestry of, of nature and interactions is as natural as it could have been from the beginning of time. And it's the focus on that personal element of game drive, of safari experience that we really value because it's that, that if we can call it a commodity, it's a that that will basically um, protect in perpetuity the wildlife and the ecosystem that we so love. And the way we believed we could do this and the contribution we believe we could make um, is, to, is to acquire property and to create sustainable businesses that can last as long as possible. And, you know, we, my heart from, from my early days was I wanted to be, as with every young guy growing up in South Africa, I wanted to be a section ranger in the Kruger National Park. And um, naturally with all of our uh, changes, our political landscape, et cetera, you know, there's a need to just reinvent and, and readapt. And I reinvented myself along the way. And we looked at the commercial element in making the contribution rather than research and, um, and conservation, you know, hands-on conservation. And so we just took a new, a new take on it all. And in this, in this process, you know, we, uh, the two families came together and we just really feel that linking a sustainable business and, um, and creating pillars in our business which is essentially the, the protection of our uh, contributing to the ecosystem and the communities because the two are interlinked. And I don't believe that there's any future success in our conservation game without linking those two elements um, and, you know, and, and, and bringing the two together. And so that is really the heart of Delini. And what we tried to do is do something a little bit different. And um, we all know that in our game of, of um, <clears throat> hospitality in, in a broad sense, um, we, we live in a numbers game. It's all about numbers. And that is why hotels and large hospitality establishments are all about how, the volume game. And we did exactly the opposite. We decided to take um, the, the, bed, the commercial bed rights that we have on our properties are more than what we have. We decided to go low impact. We decided to go um, high end and very, very um, um, bespoke rather than numbers. And in that, it's all about the personal safari. And that is really what we like to, to call the hallmark of who we are and what we do. It's about that personalized safari experience that we've thought of everything before anybody else or any of our guests would have wanted to ask for anything. We presented or we've thought of it for them. And essentially that then is an extension of who we are and how we would like to, um, like to host people ourselves. And so our camps, our teams and all our staff are basically trying to be ex an extension of that. And that is what we hope we achieve. And uh, I think the feedback shows we, we do it most of the time. <laughs> I like to think a lot more than most of the time, but the reality is we do it most of the time. So, you know, a little bit of um, background into you know, what we've, where we came from and what we started with the Davis family and the Garrett family. And um, yeah, and just living our passion. And naturally we've had to relook at this. And I think tests like COVID really test every element about us because you know, it brings out the heart of what you're doing. 
And one of the commitments we made when um, this COVID-19 pandemic hit us is that we looked at what are our priorities and what are our pillars. And one of our core priorities that we acknowledge and we've hold, held on to is our staff. And so we made commitments to next year, 2021, in keeping our staff so that they, they could also um, face this COVID storm with a certain bit of certainty. I mean, COVID took away most of what we know as our certainty. And, um, and so where we can bring in certainty, that was our role. That was our absolute focus. And um, so we, we, we did that. And naturally, we are trying to adapt. And we believe it's a big hill to climb, but we'll climb it. And I believe we'll get there. And so the other pillar is community. And we believe that these type of setbacks shouldn't deter us from focusing on what we believe is paramount. And so our projects that we run and had commissioned and started in the communities, we continued during the whole of COVID. And I will elaborate slightly on those when we get to that point in the presentation. And, um, and then obviously the conservation side. So those three pillars formed the basis of what was non-negotiable. And, um, and that is how we've, we've focused on, on, we've majored on the majors, we call it. And, uh, and trusting that as, as we find some form of normalcy, and normality. We will, um, when the guests start traveling again, we will be, you know, back to where we were before COVID. So having said that, um, I would like to give, uh, just give you a small little video to just remind you um, of the, of the Dulini collection and the beautiful area that we live in and we're so privileged to be a part of. So Andy, I'm going to put it, put it over and then you're going to do the playing. Is that correct? That's correct. I've just got to change one or two settings. So if you can go to the next okay. slide, Ian. All right. All right. Give me, I'm going to take back control. Sorry. We need to go back one. All right. Um, here we go. Okay. There we go. Cool. We are sorted. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Cool. So let me um, quickly give you back control, Ian. Sorry. Okay, Ian, you should um, have control again. Sorry, let me just quickly change the settings here. Uh, sorry, I need to change the settings. Sorry. Yeah, it's telling me at the top of the screen that I'm controlling your screen. So I think. Okay, let me take control back again. Sorry for a second. It's a little bit technical here. Let's take those. Okay, can everyone see that clearly? Jared? Yeah, I've got to clear my side. Okay, cool. Ian, you need right. to click back on and take control. Okay, let me just go to this one. <clears throat> All right, all esteemed guests sitting at home and at the office, you're back online, I think. <laughs> Look, uh, something else I wanted to say just at the intro when we started was just to let you all know, wherever you may be sitting, that our prayers and thoughts are with you all, in that um, as we all start to climb back and uh, reignite our businesses and just to try and generate activity, you know, that you the best for all of you out there and we're all in this together. So we're just thinking of you all and just, you know, praying and trusting that you will also have a speedier recovery as we get on our feet. Um, I just wanted to quickly touch on this point because, you know, we all know the, the amount of information and the, uh, the amount of regulations and debates about all the COVID business. But I think what is important is just to highlight that um, and the, the confidence that we've given to people to be able, to our guests to be able to book and to you to be able to, to confidently take a reservation. You know, we've amended our, um, all of our um, cancellation policies, et cetera, as has most people. But just to remind you that we, you know, people are entitled to full refunds and um, they, they only have to pay final amounts in 30 days out. And, uh, you know, they don't have to worry about losing deposits. Um, at when that time comes, etc. So I just wanted to remind everybody that we have adjusted our policies. All the details are on the um, on our website and also from our res office. So any any details you need there, you can get. And also at the camps, we've followed suit with everybody in the sense of you know the social distancing and the sanitizing equipment. And I think a key thing that we would also I want to also elaborate on is that we have a very stringent. Um, monitoring monitoring program with our staff and uh, we've reduced the amount of staff that can the, the timing for them to go off property and back on so we've tried to adjust everything that we think can help people feel more secure that um the the the, the probability or the you know the chance of, of of covid coming through is obviously much lower so we have done everything we can and again you know we have safety on the site that is a medical company that is fully trained and has trained all of our staff We've been through a number of training programs. So I think we're pretty well kitted out and well, well um, versed on what to do and what not to do. So you can send your guests with a lot of confidence. All right. Um, and also any questions on this, you're welcome to just direct message us or just ask later. Okay, then in a nutshell, um, I went over the history and ethos uh, from our insights. And if anybody wanted more information on that, please just ask. But again, I just wanted to always touch on the points that set us apart. And the key element is location. You know, we, um, being in the Sabi Sands, we are in one of the highest density of wildlife uh, reserves. And hence, you see so much more in a shorter time frame. And that is just, you know, and one of the reasons why a lot of people don't realize this is that if you take the ISO heights, which are the, um, the, it's the rain lines of, of our country, and you look at where Sabi Sands is in parallel to the Skakuza and just a bit north of Low Sabi. That area actually has one of the highest rainfall areas in the entire Greater Kruger. And naturally, the higher the rainfall, the greater the, the diversity that, um, that is able to be on the, on the ground. And so that is a key element in what allows for that level of diversity because of the carrying capacity of the land. That then feeds into the optimal um, safari experience which I think we all know and, uh, and appreciate. And we'll touch on a bit of those at the moment. And I think what's been amazing during this COVID is how many um, lodges and entities started these armchair safaris. And the, it's reignited such an interest in safari locally. And the amount of requests and, and feedback we get from all of that has just been remarkable. And I think it really has been 
it's been an incredible blessing to, to so many people sitting at home. So my background, as I said to you, was always wanting to be a researcher and a, a kind of a section ranger. So my priority, my default setting is always safari. And that is what we're here for. And that is what I believe the guests travel to us for. You know, all the other beautiful elements that we add in, the luxury accommodation, the touches, the, all the elements that we, we put in and that we want you to just feel and, and, and be embraced by, those you can get anywhere, any other type of destination. But the thing that sets us apart is safari. So everything that links directly to the safari will always remain our core priority. And that feeds into the hospitality, you know, being a very small lodge, lodges, but a lot of staff. We have one of the highest staff to guest ratios in the reserve. We have 4.8 staff to every guest. And that is what allows us to be so prepared and so, um, you know, waiting. You know, we just, we're just ready for guests. And it allows the staff to, to really plan ahead for, for, for what they do. The, um, and then naturally what has to go, it's, it's just mutually inclusive with, with, with a good experience overall, is good cuisine. And, um, and we, you know, we have a master, ex excellent a master chef, I call him. And uh, that filters through to all the camps. And, you know, people do expect it nowadays. It's not really a hope anymore. And so you just have to be on that standard. And then we like to use the word indulgently inclusive. And the reason we say that is because we try to incorporate every possible element that would add to the, um, the safari but that's inclusive. So we have a, the most generous amount of inclusive wines, for example, and you know, spirits, et cetera, or drinks and all those type of uh, inclusions. And, um, and with the accommodation, you know, it's the size of the suites, it's the private decks, everyone has their own private pool and it's heated. So every element we've tried to see is how much more indulgent can we include something? And that is, that is an, a thread that we try to take through in everything we do. Um, and everybody who arrives, is the staff have prepared for them and they are greeted by name if they've been before their history, et cetera. So it really is like uh, kind of coming home in a way when you're returning, that is. Okay, I never quite know how much time to spend on this slide because most of you listening or watching this, I assume know this map exceptionally well, but just as a reminder, I'm gonna move my mouse. The two Delini properties is Exeter and Delini here. And then we traverse this entire Western block. This is Savannah down here in the South, our, our neighbor and co-conspirator in all things. And um, so, you know, here's the Sand River. And I do like to take this opportunity to remind everybody that, you know, if we take our Western sector as a unit, there's only three other entities in this entire reserve that can travel, traverse both sides of this river um, unencumbered. And that is an incredible privilege. And I do like to highlight it because it's those elements that really create the diversity of the game experience that we hold so dear. So access to us is via Newington Gate um, is the easiest. And airstrips we have on Ulusaba here, we have Ulusaba airstrip direct flight in, and there you have Airlink and Federal Air. And then at Skakuza, you can fly in as well. And then there's a road transfer that comes along out here and up there, which can take about one hour, 15 minutes to one and a half hours. And there are transfers and airplane hops. So, you know, you just have to inquire. There's, there's all the options, all the options. Um, I'm a bit rusty at this. I'm just trying to think if I've uh, forgotten anything there. No, if I no. have, you can ask me later. All right. Okay, so we are familiar with the good old Sabi sand. So as I was saying earlier, the safari experience, this is always our core element. This is what your guests are coming to us for. And so, you know, our area traverses, we traverse over 10,000 hectares. And in that 10,000 hectares, our traversing area incorporates all the biodiversity components that are, that are included in the Sabi sands. So you have a very, very heterogeneous experience. And whereas some areas you go to are very monotonous. And uh, so, you know, that's, 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 that's another very, very key element. Uh, we focus on delivering the perfect safari. And so we are very, very, um, priori we prioritize the quality of our guides because good guide, good safari, bad guide, bad safari. 
So that is absolutely a non-negotiable. And our guides will always wear earpieces so that uh, the guests don't hear the radio. Our guide and tracker combos, I like to highlight this as well, uh, they always work together because we believe there's a key, key relationship requirement there. Um, we, are, we do go off-road and it is, it is very, very um, circumspect. So the guys don't just bushwhack and just go crazy out there. Um, you know, the tracker on the front is, is very well trained. And so when they do it, they do it for specific reasons and when it's appropriate. We, every guest can get bushwalks. And when we say bushwalks, we're not talking about just the 30 minute, 40 minute stroll. If a guest wants to walk rather than drive, we, we also arrange that. And, um, you know, we want to get the most holistic safari experience we can offer. And sometimes guests will want to sacrifice a morning drive and they rather do the walk and we do that. So, you know, the walking component is available and naturally we look at the, 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 the experience or the, the dynamic of the group or the, the couple, et cetera, or whoever the individual. And, um, you know, everything in the game drive is inclusive, where it be the, the drink snacks and the drinks and the, the, all the lovely sundowners, the, everything else. We've also, during lockdown, refurbished our entire fleet of Land Rovers. They've been rebuilt, repainted, re-equipped, um, re and they are looking brand new. You know, naturally, we were all disappointed that Land Rover decided to come out with a Land Rover that looked like a Discovery, and we can't modify the damn things. So it's really a bit of a setback for all of us, but we've had to do what we can. And so we've taken our Defenders, they were only three years old anyway, and we've just rebuilt them and they are looking absolutely fantastic. So they're always, you know, keeping everything up to the best possible standard that we can. All right. And the chariot, the vehicle we call them, the game drive vehicle, we have equipped them um, with the two, the individual bucket seats and all the uh, accessories. We provide the binoculars, we provide camera mounts and a big, a big container so that you don't have to sit the things in your lap. Now, all of these elements uh, feed very well into the COVID, the new COVID norm, can we call it, because of the spacing, the distancing, et cetera. <clears throat> and what we've also done is that the, the bar between the guide and the first row of guests has got a perspex screen in front of it. It's an extra thick one so that doesn't wobble, it doesn't flap in the wind. It's actually pretty good. And it's there to, so, so that the guides don't have to drive with a mask so that they can communicate and speak properly. And that's working very well. And so the vehicles, if we only have four guests in a vehicle, we, put, we miss a row. But if we have uh, six guests, the, six, the, the spacing is still acceptable and everybody so far is happy. So we are pretty confident in that. And um, yeah. Oh, we have six for, for, for guests, but if we have a family structure, we can modify any of our vehicles to add a seat in any row we want and somebody can sit in front, etc. So we are very flexible. So where you have a strange configuration of guests, please don't ever hesitate to shout and ask what the options are. Right, there's just some more pictures to show you different angles. And again, all of these components, the camera mounts and all that, the binos are all inclusive. So guests just get that option. Get that. And then the safari, you know, the whole point is that the, the intimacy and the, um, the guides are incredibly well trained and, and they take you into the most um, intimate game viewing uh, experiences that you could want to, could want to experience. That's a good COVID picture. Just shows two people on a vehicle and, um, that was just taken during lockdown, actually. One of our guides took that. We had the giraffe was killed in the Sand River just near Leadwood. And um, this beautiful shot with that full moon rising um, in the back there, it was just incredible. That's just a game drive. Just to remind all, all of you listening and watching of how important it is to get your dose of safari as soon as you can. Uh, just to touch on the bush walks again. By the way, the, the guards do walk armed. This picture was just taken with, without that, uh, without the rifle.
Oh, next one. How about that? Okay, then just to touch again on the hospitality. Um, all the lodges, we have the personalized bus, butler service. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's elements of, it's that the team make our, make our business. And that is why it was a pillar that I said to you we invested in from the beginning is that um, you know, brick and mortar can't embrace you. It's only the people that inhabit it, create the, create the ethos and the environment. And so we, it will always be an absolute focus, focus for us. And, um, and it's a hallmark of our trade, really. Every camp has a wine cellar and a significant component of the wine cellars is inclusive. And it just allows guests that indulgence to be able to walk in and just enjoy themselves, look at wines, look at various, um, beverages from around the world and local and just enjoy. This slide always just shows you that our staff will go to any lens to service a, uh, a guest delight, even through crocodiles. Dining, now we all know that, as I said to you earlier, that dining is an expectation, a, a high level of designing and a very high standard. But what we like to do is we like to keep um, the dining component as another element of surprise. So what we do is we always dine weather dependent in a new, in a new area every, every meal so that people don't ever feel they're going to a dining facility, that they don't know where they're going to eat, whether it's under the sausage tree on the river, for example, um, or that's at River Lodge, or it's dining out in, on the lawn, private dinners. I mean, we actually have to do that now. You're not allowed to dine together. So all meals are separate and uh, exclusive. So it's just to, to, to remind you that even the dining experience will always be, we try to add an element of magic, of a surprise. That's the Boma at Leadwood. And we also include, you know, um, that's a bush dinner. We change the style of dining so that you'll have interactive meals like in the bush dinner, the Boma, and then you'll have very, very fine dining elements in beautiful white linen tables on the lawn or wherever. All right, and then each of the lodges has a gym. Um, we have therapists that provide the massages and uh, we've gone through the COVID components. So even uh, for the foreseeable future, we can continue those under strict conditions, etc. cetera. And um, our community projects, are, we're very engaged in those. And any guest that wants to travel with purpose um, all you have to do is send a, me a message to us and then we can arrange a number of options. And, um, and then say Afri Africa Safety, it gives people a great peace of mind that we have the medical team on site. So for any emergency or any issue, then we can you know, grab it. And I just thought of touching on some of the work that we've been doing during the COVID because a key philosophy of ours is that we could not stop this, the, the, the work that we had started. Uh, because our communities are the neediest of the needy. And so during COVID, we, um, we distributed over 600 family food parcels. And what we did with a company called Mercy Air, which is also um, based in White River, is that we created a pack, which is actually for a month. It's not, it, you know, we tried to get a family pack for a month. And so, you know, with our family and fr friends that were helping, we, we managed to do about 600 of those. Um, we've, we facilitated in the cultivation of a food garden and provided a, a, an installed irrigation system to sustain it. I should have actually sent a picture of what it looks like now because they are totally self-reliant on the veggies. It's, it's a remarkable little project. And that is at the um, Kildare Home for the Elderly. It's one of the core projects that we focus on. There's 26, 27 residents there and 15, 15 staff. And uh, shame, we just actually lost the, the first um, resident in this home at 103 years of age. She passed away uh, last week. And um, so, you know, it's just, and there are very few um, um, homes and facilities for the aged. And then we have um, Lea Sikani Disability Center, which is a new one. We have 20 residents there. And, um, you know, it was just with the program, we realized that there is no real home for people with this serious disabilities. And so this is now growing and it's, it's, I mean, it grows by the month. And so those, that's another project. And then the digital um, learning center in Dumfries, which we are a, um, a partner in. Um, and, you know, the, the other thing that we found during this process is that a lot of the feeding schemes in all the government schools were stopped. 
And so we had to try and do something because a lot of families are totally reliant on that element of the feeding scheme. So there are all these elements and we just believe that there's our responsibility to continue them and we did. And it's, um, yeah, it was a, a very rewarding and um, humbling experience. That's um, safety, although they have changed their vehicle slightly. All right, now, um, just to always remind you of the diversity of the camps that we have in the Delini collection. One of the specials that we've introduced now is called the uh, pay for five, stay for six. And a lot of people do ask, why would somebody want to stay six nights um, in one camp or in one place? And although with COVID now, you're finding we are getting requests for people not wanting to move around as much. So I think that that could become more normal. But the key thing with the Delaney collection is that that special, you can choose any configuration of nights within all three camps. And why we did this is because the standard of offering in all three camps remains the same. So all the inclusions, the space, and the offerings remain the same, but the personality of each camp changes distinctly. And it's the distinct change in the camp that allows for people to feel to stay within Dulini and stay six days and move around between two or all three camps and feel that they had a much more diverse but holistic um, ex uh, safari experience without the added cost and loss of time of transfers, going to other reserves, flights, and everything else. So we believe it offers a lot, lot more for guests who wanted six days and want diversity but don't want cost and delays. So Delini Camp is our classic camp. There are six suites. That's one suite you're looking at there. They all have um, you know, the main lounge, the bedroom, and then the bathroom, and then the heated pool. And they're on the Mabruck River. So all three camps are on a river. And so they all have a riverbed view. And we will always keep Delini as our classic camp. The, the, the configuration of it is, as you can see, the, three green, the six green blocks are the rooms. And what we've started to do is to try and offer a, what we're calling a modular system at all three camps. And why I'm saying that is that with people with COVID and the risk of, of, of social distancing and all of those, the peace of mind needed is that we, we are able to sell one vehicle, which is a six seater with three rooms. So if you are traveling as four or six people, you can take one vehicle and three rooms and we can, we can um, ring fence you and kind of co keep you separate from the other three rooms and the other six guests. And so that offers people a greater peace of mind. And the camp's structure is such that it works very, very well. And it lends itself to a very easy, um, what we call modular system. So the look of the Lini is, as, as I said, it's the old worldy camp. It's got the outside covered veranda in each suite. And um, it's got the, you know, the high thatch ceilings with the mosquito nets and then um, every room is air conned if, 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 if we need it. The bedroom leads out to the main area. Every room has a very well stocked mini bar and you know the coffee machines, the espresso machines. We all <clears throat> need these things. We don't want them. We actually need them. The bathroom, all glass so that you get the, uh, the lovely vista views. Uh, Ian, while you pause there, I see a question's come through. Um, uh, yes. If guests move between the three camps, will their ranger go with them? Is the question from? It is an uh, option. We it is an option. Uh, we've had we've had one or two. We've had a few uh, bookings of that nature where we've moved the, the 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 guide, but we do need to plan it beforehand. So if if a person is there for the first time and there were only two nights or one night at one camp and then moving on, it may not be possible. But um, we do try to do it if we can because we generally have one guide over what we call over the top in the camps at any one time for emergencies. So it is an, we do try to do it, yes. Thank you. And also another thing about that, if you do take that special, we do offer the option of, of doing a walking hike, a trail between the camps instead of you being transferred. So we have a special four by four pulley bag that we put your luggage in and you can tow it through all the obstacles and the soft sand and it works very well. Obviously I'm kidding where your luggage all goes with people, with the, with the staff, and you uh, you just do a normal hike and a bush trail along the river and you get to your new camp. That's an option. If you don't feel like doing that, you just drive. 
Okay. Great. Thanks. Um, and then naturally the pool view over the river. And as I said, every pool in each camp is heated. So you can use it all year round. And then the lounge, just to highlight the unique, the, the old world and, and, and bygone era theme of Delini. The classic spy. Then Ledwood. Ledwood is our smallest camp. It only has the four suites. And um, it lends itself exceptionally well to a villa booking. Although six rooms is not exceptionally larger, and it also can be easily a villa booking, the four suites as a family of six or eight traveling together that wants total exclusivity, Ledwood lends itself exceptionally well. But we also do the modular system with two rooms and two vehicles. So you could have four people on two vehicles rather than you know, six on one. And, um, and we have the same off offering. Now, Ledwood's theme is far more masculine and um, it's, it's very contemporary in, uh, in comparison to Delini, as you can tell. And here again, just to highlight how different the camps are so that you feel that you, if you were moving between one and more than two camps, you can, you know, you can see the, the, attract, the attraction and the appeal of having, staying within the Delini collection. And the, um, we just in each of our suites, we have a king bed made up with two, uh, three quarters. So we can split them if we need twins, but the only camp where the beds can move apart from each other is Delini. The others, they split them, but they are still together, just to put that out there. And you can see all the bathrooms have the inside shower, the outside shower. Another thing I like to highlight is that all of our camps have a totally separate toilet. We always believe it. And I, I say that because we get a lot of people asking about do you have a, a separate toilet? And uh, it's important to say yes. Okay. That's the, the main lounge area. And then River Lodge. And then River Lodge is, we, 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 we say it's six suites, but we actually have seven, but we only sell six. So for emergencies or configurations or a big villa booking that needs 14, you know, just bear that in mind. But um, so we also have the modular system on offer here where we'll have the three rooms each with a vehicle. Um, and we also have a private vehicle on option, but naturally that has to be booked way in advance. Uh, and also has the gym. And um, now River Lodge, we, we're calling Bush Chic. So it's a bit of a combination of a little bit of classic safari with contemporary. And um, we rebuilt this entirely in 2018 from its original structures. The bathroom. Beautiful views over the Sand River. Also the heated pools. Actually, our theme, our theme for this camp when we rebuilt it was called The River Runs Through It. And all the elements that we saw in the riverbed of the Sand River, we tried to bring into the, into the, uh, into the camp. All right. Can I just come now in here quickly again? Yeah. Yeah, um, a lot of the guys, I mean, as our trade partners, a lot of you might have seen this lodge um, before it's refurb and you probably won't recognize it at all. And so, you know, Ian's being, being modest when he says it's been refurbed. It's, it's, it was literally a pretty much a full rebuild. Um, very, very different from the old Exeter, inverted commas, River Lodge. Um, so, I mean, completely upgraded. Pretty much every area has been expanded. Um, and this is absolutely on a five-star plus level along with the other two Delini Lodges, just to remind you. Sorry, back to you, Ian. No, great. Perfect. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, so that's just a sausage tree at the bottom. Again, just a different view of it on the river. Now, our rates, our rates for 2020 and 2020, the rest of 2020 and then into 2021. What we've done is we've frozen our 2020 rates um, up until 31st of May 2021. And from 1 June, we had an 8.5 or 8.3% increase. 
and that will then run into 2022. But um, it's at the moment we are, you know, we are looking. We we are open to the domestic market, and we have a SADIC special, which is at the moment we have advertised it up until the 14th of December. We are naturally going to relook at those dates because depending on what the market does and how how the world responds to COVID, we need to be adaptive and we need to be able to respond quickly to these changes. So we will keep the, the, the market, we will keep all of you um, abreast of the, those changes with emailers and announcements as soon as we make those decisions and feedback from you in the sense that um, of what you what kind of responses and inquiries you're getting would always be very helpful. I think if we work together in that line and communicate, um, we could get an understanding of the quantum that we're looking at and what type of um, what type of timing we need and what 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 responses we could anticipate. So, so therefore, um, you know, from from in 2021, we will maintain our long stay, which is the five for six. We have the honeymoon special where the bride pays 50% three night minimum. And then our repeat guest special is a 15% discount on any person returning to any of our three camps. And then we included the extra 15% off until the end of March, 2021. And um, yeah, I, th I think I've covered that. Did I miss anything, Jared and, and Cara? Not good. Let me see what's here. Ah, this slide. We just thought Jared was chatting to me and, and, and advised that it would be a, a good time to just maybe highlight um, to everybody just what the GCC levy that the Sabi Sands um, requires from everybody coming in. What, it, what does it achieve? You know, a lot of people know that we contribute something to general conservation. And uh, this slide just gives you a nice summary of, um, of where those fundings go and what they contribute to. And so if you look at the simple um, pie graph and you look at 25% of all that funding goes to ecological programs, the other 25% goes to community programs and 50% of it, it goes to the wildlife protection, which is primarily rhino. And officially the Sabi Sands is the safest haven for rhino on the planet now. And, and that is the kind of quantum of investment that it takes to get that status. So if you just quickly, I'll go over those in case you can't see them clearly. So you've got four digital learning centers that have reached 1,536 child learners and 177 adult learners. And that number is growing continually. And I can't, if ever any of you are in the reserve and have an opportunity to go and see these digital learning centers, I would encourage you to do so to see what has been brought into rural South Africa is just mind blowing. To know that if any single individual in our rural um, communities has access to any form of course material, learning program uh, on their fingertips, it, it is remarkable. Together with Investec um, and personnel protective equipment, they purchased 117 youth interns in the field. And that intern program is, made, is, is creating incredible results. You know, there's, there's, there's the rubble, uh, there's the eradication of harmful invasive plants. I mean, that is permanent work and all of this is funded. There's, as you can see there, 17,992 anti-poaching patrols. It's, um, yeah, anyway, so just to look at that and, uh, and understand what that contribution in itself is actually making to broader conservation. I think that should, yes. That said, the cat's back. Cool. So I think that's the end of my story, everybody. All right. Um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. And um, yeah, we should be. Can everyone still see us? I don't know if I am. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, we've got you. Well, I've got you. Okay, perfect. All right, guys. So. Um, yeah, um, just from that rack perspective, um, if we look at that overall rack rate of 14,000 and some change, um, you know, up until with, with that extra 15% discount, if you look at the quality of the Delini collection at its five star plus level, I think a lot of you would, would agree with me that it's comparable to, to any of the top, top end lodges in the Sabi Sands, except the rate 
um, that you're able to get it for is is unbeatable. Um, maybe Karen, do you want to unmute yourself or Jar Jared um, and just go a little bit? We've got three or four minutes. I'd just like you to concentrate on the on the local offers um, and touch on kind of the rate levels and what what's available. You need to unmute yourself, Karen. There you go. Thanks. Yeah, sorry, I was just looking for my piece of paper. Hi, everybody. Um, so we are, um, as Ian said, running some essay specials at the moment. We have, I hope that you've all got them. Um, if not, they're going to come through to you all on the mailer now. Just to thank you for attending the webinar and just to give you a, a, a quick update on the rates and what's going on for next year. But um, we've basically got rates out. We've got some self-catering villa options, which uh, we would likely use Ledwood for that, uh, which so it's perfect if you've got three rooms or four rooms um, needed. Um, and the kitchen there is equipped with, it will set up, it's quite nicely um, set up so that you can, the guests can actually go in, but we would provide a chef uh, for, for the guest stay as well. The FIT rate starts at five, five per person per night. Um, and the rates, we can only do them to be commissionable by 10%. Um, our margins have obviously cut quite drastically and we haven't had any business in for quite some time. So we're doing what we can just to, to keep things ticking over right now. Um, it's also providing us with a nice opportunity for our staff to get used to the, you know, dealing with the COVID procedures while um, we wait for the internationals to get there. Um, and then we've got a offer for small groups and full camp bookings as well. So three suites needs to be booked, minimum stay three nights. Um, and the rate will cover six guests sharing in three suites. Um, so yeah, inclusive of meals and non-alcoholic beverages. So we've got an option for self-catering and we've got just an FIT option, but the minimum stay is for three nights. Um, obviously, if you've if you've got anything that is outside of these requirements, um, please do send it through to us. Don't not. We will obviously have a look at it. And if we've got other guests in camp already, if the camp is running, then we will likely be able to assist you. It's just we had to put a minimum stay in. Um, we weren't sure what the uptake was going to be on these rates. So we just needed to make sure it was worth operating and three nights was kind of the minimum stay. Perfect. Thanks very much, Karen. Um, Jared, if you want to just unmute yourself very quickly. Yeah, yeah. guys, Jared, um, as the sales manager of the Dulini Collection, is more than happy to also um, facilitate, you know, one-on-one -on -one training with you. You guys know from an African-focused perspective, we're out and about and doing training on a regular basis on a lot of our products. It's quite nice every now and then to have specific training on a single product or brand. And both Karen or Jared are available um, for that. Um, yeah, and now with the, you know, the travel restrictions, uh, you know, sort of easing even domestically and we're all starting to get back on our bicycles and starting to travel. I'm sure Jared will be uh, very keen to meet some of you in your offices at some point as well. Um, so yeah, Jared, um, you guys can all see him. Um, is there anything that you want to add to this, Jared, before we, we conclude? There's a, sorry, there's a question from Vicky just before. And then Jared, do you want to answer that? Can you see the yeah, question? Sure. Well, I see Ricky's message just coming through saying, uh, asking for the child policy at the three lodges. So we actually changed it during the year last year and we've gone for a standard uh, uh, child policy through all three lodges and we'll take children from eight years and older at all three. And if any of the lodges are taken exclusively, and as Ian said earlier, Ledwood works really well as an exclusive use villa, um, that child policy will fall away and children of any age can come. <clears throat> uh, one thing just to be aware of is that there aren't any pool nets and that some of the lodges are, the, the deck areas are quite high off the ground, so you don't want young, young kids going unless they are quite well supervised. But we do have child minders that can look after little kids if they do come. So it's not, it's not like we don't want little kids, but it's just something that guests must be aware of before arriving at the lodge. Um, and yeah, it's, and you're saying if anyone would like some more one-on-one -on -one training anywhere down the line on, on Delini, just let me know and I can happily set up a, a meeting, whether it's face-to-face -face when it's allowed or if it's over Zoom or anything like that with, with the rest of the team, just let me know, please. Perfect. Well, guys, I think that brings us to the end of our, um, our webinar today on the Delini Collection. I'd just like to massively thank Ian for his time. He's, he's on a little bit of leave at the moment. So, uh, you know, I 
kind of strong-armed him into, into being here. Uh, he could be lying on the beach. So thanks very much for that, Ian. Um, and thank you to your uh, beautiful pleasure, wife. Really. Thank, thank you. Thanks to Sue for, for, um, for letting us uh, steal you away from, from yourself and your family. Thanks very much to Karen and Jared for your time. I know you're both busy people. And Rogan, thanks very much for helping us with everything else. Lastly, to all of you guys, I know uh, things are heating up, getting busy. I know we've all been, you know, sitting at homes and it's, it takes a lot to tune in and, and go through this. So thank you very much for your attendance. It's, it's uh, very much appreciated. And we will be sending you an email with um, all of the details that you're needing, as well as marketing collateral that you might need um, for the Delini collection. And with that, we're going to say sayonara. Bye-bye. We'll see you again soon. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.